thoughts on what are the points that your organization considers while selecting NGOs for support? I think the first point I would like to make, this is basically extension of what uh, Noshin mentioned as well as what Piyush mentioned. You know, we, and this is, I think, is should be the kind of a process which all the companies should follow. We all have, you know, I'm talking about companies which are basically commercial organizations. We all have our budgets. Yeah. We have our monthly reviews in terms of what uh, revenue we have achieved as against the target and what were the issues and so on and so forth. I think uh, every company and every CSR committee of that company should take this same approach when it comes to the CSR monitoring and not just uh, what like Noshe mentioned, looking at the fag end of the year and have we spent the money or not. I think we should really have the budgets like any budgetary processes, typically all the companies before the new year starts, you know, before the end of the March they finalize their budget. So CSR budget also should be finalized, approved by the CSR committee, approved by the board. And if not on a monthly basis, the CSR committee should review it at least on a quarterly basis. And the way one should look at is, this is not kind of a, a one-time kind of a review activity or oh, dekho kind of a thing, lena, not that way, but really monitoring on a, on a regular basis, at least on a quarterly basis like you review the performance of the company. That's what my advice is. And that's why, that's what we try to do it in most of the companies where I'm associated with on the CSR front. Typically, uh, your question was with reference to what are the other things which uh, we look at uh, in terms of, and I think uh, both the points which, uh, which, in fact, not both, all the points which uh, Piyush made, we kind of look at those points very carefully. I mentioned about the, uh, you know, the, uh, the demographic dividend point, which I mentioned. I think the corporate sector should really look at how this so-called advantage which we have or the dividend that we have can be really exploited by the country as a whole. And both the CSA organizations and the corporates can really work to get towards that. And I strongly believe that, uh, you know, if you don't have affordable education, and if you don't have affordable health, you know, all this young population which we are talking about between zero to, or say, a child which is born till the age of 18, and then they're supposed to get into the employment or earning kind of a, a kind of a life. One should really provide the affordable education and affordable health. Otherwise, it will become a big liability. And my personal belief is both the NGOs and the companies should work towards making it happen. So when you showed the pie chart and you showed that bulk of the money is spending on education is being spent on education and health, I'm not surprised. The only point is one should really look at it that how it is being spent in true sense of really creating a big positive impact. Otherwise, you know, you have seen a lot of wasted interest both in educational areas as well as in the health areas. And that should be kind of a not encourage, I would say discourage very strongly. So companies, when they're looking at the NGOs from the point of your partnering, they should really look at which are the NGOs which are really creating big positive impact in these areas. We talk about rural development, fine. In the areas of rural development or rural areas, health and education are the most important things as compared to the urban uh, areas. So therefore, I look at it, health and education as the key primary areas. The other area I look at is not so much about rural empowerment, uh, rural uh, development, but women empowerment. I think women empowerment is another important thing because, you know, in rural areas, women are exploited. And that is something which should be avoided. And therefore, NGOs which are really into the women empowerment area should be encouraged. And we look at that kind of a, those NGOs which are kind of a working in these specific areas.